Welcome back. This is what's happening in the Miami Dolphins right now. Strategy of the Miami Dolphins in the 2021 NFL Draft. Miami Dolphins re-signed with two free agents. Prospects in the O-line, Miami Dolphins have to keep eye on. Latest. Miami Dolphins off-season schedule in April, when some players boycott the voluntary spring workouts. That is enough. Follow me. Strategy of the Miami Dolphins in the 2021 NFL Draft Two weeks from tomorrow, the 2021 NFL Draft will open and all of the speculation can end. And, if you read enough mock drafts this time of year, you'll probably welcome the end of speculation and smokescreens and instead simply enjoy having some definitive answers to what the Miami Dolphins are going to do. Already this week the Miami Dolphins have seen varying analysts offer them a trade-up, ESPN's Mel Kipper Jr., and a trade down, the Draft Network, pro football focus, from the number 6 overall selection. But no matter which choices the Dolphins choose to make with the 2021 NFL Draft, the prominent theme for the team must be maximizing their value at each turn, and not drafting out of fear for what might not materialize at the end of the road. One good example is the pick at number 18 overall. Many Dolphins fans assume that selection is destined to be Alabama running back Najee Harris. Miami missed on each of the top five running backs of the 2020 draft and surely the team would not make the same mistake again, right? Consider that Miles Gaskin, the back who eventually fell into the starting role in Miami, outproduced all but one of those rookie backs as a second-year pro himself and a former seventh-round selection. So if the Dolphins feel like Najee Harris is appropriate value with the number 18 overall pick, fine. He'd be a welcomed addition to the offense. But Miami shouldn't prioritize him just because the team presumably needs a boost in the backfield and he might not make it to number 36. If you take good players and find good value, things have a way of taking care of themselves. Of course, you can debate just how much value got with their latter two first-round picks of 2020. Noah Igbenogany, who still offers plenty of promise despite an underwhelming rookie campaign, was a non-factor for the team as a rookie. Austin Jackson played plenty at left tackle but his selection came as the fifth tackle but his selection came as the fifth offensive tackle off the board in the first 18 selections last year, and it was reported ahead of last year's draft by some that Miami hoped to walk out of the first round with a quarterback and a tackle with their first few selections. So did Miami draft of fear for what the tackle position might look like if they passed? The team got a better performing prospect at tackle with the number 39 overall pick in Robert Hunt a selection that was more of a value proposition than drafting Jackson shortly after the likes of Tristan Wirfs was pulled off the board by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers just a few picks earlier. That's the valuable lesson. Miami did not force the issue at running back and managed to find appropriate production regardless in 2020. Even if the team is in need of more talent in the backfield and a more powerful, do-it-all, back than Gaskin can be. At tackle, however, Miami saw a run underway and prioritized the player remaining in Austin Jackson before doubling up and finding better value at number 39 overall and overall courtesy of Hunt. Miami's objective should be clear, upgrade the roster, and put some focus on the skill group while things are under construction. But the team shouldn't feel pressure to force picks due to scarcity or need. When you're filling the roster with good, hard-nosed players, some of those finer details can take care of themselves. Miami Dolphins re-signed with two free agents. The Miami Dolphins addressed some issues Wednesday when they re-signed a couple of players. The moves involved cornerback Jamal Perry and linebacker Calvin Munson, both of whom were exclusive rights free agents. Since the Dolphins extended a qualifying offer to each player, Munson and Perry were prevented from negotiating with any other team, making their return pretty much a formality. The Dolphins have one remaining ERFA to sign, and that's cornerback Nick Needham. Quarterback Jake Rudick also was an ERFA this offseason, but the Dolphins declined to make a qualifying offer and that essentially made Rudick an unrestricted free agent. He remains unsigned as of April 14, along with Dolphins UFA's Kevin Frazier and DeAndre Washington and non-tendered restricted free agent Isaiah Ford. Perry played 13 games with one start last season after starting six games in 2019 when he joined the Dolphins in the offseason after previously being a member of the New England Patriots practice squad. 
Perry's playing time on defense diminished last year, in part because of the emergence of Needham as the slot corner. Munson appeared in every game last season, all in a backup capacity. He played 267 snaps, 220 of them on special teams. He, too, joined the Dolphins after being on the Patriots. Prospects in the O-line, Miami Dolphins have to keep eye on. The Miami Dolphins are presumably not done working and tinkering with an offensive line group that is filled with young talents. The Dolphins were aggressive and assertive in their bid to bolster the group last offseason and the team ended the year with three starting rookies up front for their efforts. The promise of growth and development is real. But Miami must be careful not to rest on their laurels. There's improvement opportunities awaiting in this month's NFL draft, and if you're curious as to which prospects might get the call, you can find some pretty significant trends along Miami's offensive line additions over the past 24 months. We first looked at the trends with Miami's offensive line back in May of 2020. In all, the Flores Greer regime has been responsible for bringing in the following notable offensive linemen over the last 16 months IOL Michael Deiter, 2019 Third Road. OT Austin Jackson, 2021st Road. OT Austin Jackson, 2021st Road. OL Robert Hunt, 2022nd Road. IOL Solomon Kindley, 2024th Road. OT Julian Davenport, 2019 Trade. IOL Ted Karras, 2020 Free Agency. OL Eric Flowers, 2020 Free Agency. Much like on the defensive side of the ball, density is offensive side of the ball. Density is a frequent variable in the Dolphins' offensive line. Of all seven linemen added to the Dolphins' roster over the last 16 months, the average weight is 320.7 pounds, and it may even be higher for what the likes of Michael Deiter, credited at 309 pounds, came through at the NFL Combine in 2019. Interestingly enough, the Dolphins' trends for the offensive side of the ball with athletic testing indeed match that of the defensive side of the ball. Short area power in the form of the standing broad jump seems to be the best indicator of what quality the Dolphins covet. 2020 draft picks Solomon Kindley, Foote, and Robert Hunt, Groin, did not participate in on-field drills or testing at the 2020 NFL Combine and free agent signing Eric Flowers did not complete the drill at the 2015 Combine, but each of the other four added offensive linemen over the past 16 months have all logged a standing broad jump that exceeded the 70th percentile for their position group. He made two additional prominent moves to the offensive line. A low-risk trade for 2021st round tackle Isaiah Wilson, who has already been cut due to off-the-field conduct, and former Ravens center Matt Skura in free agency. If you factor in Skura and Wilson to the equation, the trends for the Dolphins' offensive line continues. Wilson checked in at the 2020 NFL Combine at 350 pounds and posted a 9-foot-2 broad jump, 87th percentile of offensive tackles. Skura came up just short of the 70th percentile threshold at his NFL Combine back in 2016 with an 8-foot-7 broad jump, 61st percentile of interior linemen. But at his pro day that same offseason, Skura bumped his number to 8 feet 9 inches, good for the 73rd percentile of interior linemen. Skura is currently listed on the Dolphins roster at 313 pounds. In all, that's now 6 of 9 added prominent linemen to post a qualifying jump in excess of the 70th percentile in the broad jump with no tests available for the other three, and the average weight across the board of the group at the time of their addition to the Dolphins roster is now 323 pounds. Which 2021 offensive line prospects qualify? Of course, there was no NFL combine to work with, but the pro day offered prospects a chance to showcase their athleticism. Here are the offensive line prospects who should garner attention from the Dolphins for their blend of size, 310 pounds and more, and lower body explosiveness, a 70th percentile or better in the broad jump. Alabama OL Alex Leatherwood, 312 pounds, 98th percentile broad jump, 9 feet 10. Texas OT Samuel Cosme, 314 pounds, 98th percentile broad jump, 9 feet 9. Tennessee Og Trey Smith, 321 pounds, 92nd percentile broad jump, 9 feet 4. Wisconsin Whitewater IOL Quinn Miners, 320 pounds, 90th percentile broad jump, 9 feet 3. Stanford OL Walker Little, 313 pounds, 90th percentile broad jump, 9 foot 3. 
Oregon OT Penne Sewell, 331 pounds, 84th percentile broad jump, 9 feet 1, 84th percentile broad jump, 9 feet 1. Oklahoma State OT Tevin Jenkins, 317 pounds, 72nd percentile broad jump, 8 feet 10. Injury omission. Alabama IOL Landon Dickerson, 333 pounds, knee injury. Just missed. USCOL Elijah Vera Tucker, 308 pounds, 77th percentile broad jump for IOL, Georgia Og Ben Cleveland, 343 pounds, 56th percentile broad jump for IOL. If you're looking for the Dolphins' short list of potential early draft additions to the offensive line, this is probably a good place to start. Miami has shown a willingness to make an exception at center, the team put a firm offer in for Patriots center David Andrews this offseason. Andrews meets the lower body explosiveness threshold, he jumped 9 feet flat at his 2015 Pro Day, an 80th percentile mark, but is only listed at 300. So perhaps someone like Oklahoma's Creed Humphrey, 302 pounds, 94th percentile jump, would warrant consideration for the Dolphins as well. But the trend lines here are pretty firm, so your hunt for potential additions to the offensive line should start with this group of 2021 prospects. Miami Dolphins offseason schedule in April. After players from five teams released statements through the NFLPA that they were planning on boycotting the voluntary workouts this spring, the league announced a revised model for the offseason program. The program will run for nine weeks as in the past, with the Miami Dolphins and every other team getting started Monday and wrapping things up June 18 after four weeks of OTAs. Sometime during those four weeks will be a mandatory minicamp, the only time veterans actually will be mandated to be in attendance, remember, this is a voluntary off-season program. That's obviously a change from last year when the entire off-season program was virtual because of the COVID-19 outbreak, meetings will be virtual for at least the first two phases of the off-season program, April 19 through May 21. The second phase, from May 17 to 21, will feature on-field work with coaches but at a teaching pace and with no contact. The off-season plan includes both off-season plan includes both a post-draft rookie minicamp and a rookie football development program. The rookie minicamp can be scheduled either one or two weekends after the draft, meaning either May 7 to 9 or May 14 to 16. The NFLPA, which has been pushing for a second consecutive all-virtual off-season program, did not agree to this setup, but the league has the right to implement those rules, according to NFL Network reporter Tom Pelissero. Layers from the Denver Broncos, Seattle Seahawks, Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Detroit Lions announced Tuesday through the NFLPA that they were not planning on attending off-season workouts. The New England followed suit Wednesday, though their wording said, many of us, plan on boycotting